We have major updates on the Eastern Conference standings for the Miami Heat possibly getting out of the play-in tournament as well as what a deep playoff run could do for their opportunities for the Miami Heat. We'll break this all down on this episode of Heat Digest where we create daily Miami Heat content. So if that interests you and you want to stay up to date on all things Miami Heat, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as 85.5% of you guys currently watching this video are not currently subscribed. We're on the road to 1,200 subscribers. We're actually just 14 subscribers away as we're making this video. So go down. Click the subscribe button. It means the world to us. We appreciate all of your love and support. We do see all of it, so thank you. Now let's get to it and break down this massive Eastern Conference standings update. As we had a lot of major losses last night. It came on a night where we had 24 different teams in NBA action. One of them was not the Miami Heat as we played Tuesday night and lost to the Golden State Warriors. And now that loss is feeling a hell of a lot more heavy due to the fact that that we had three major losses last night. The first one was the Magic. Yes, the Warriors, the team that beat us on Tuesday night, went to Orlando and beat the Orlando Magic convincingly by eight. They really dominated the entire game, and that wasn't it. The Clippers won a thrilling game in dramatic fashion over the Philadelphia 76ers after being down basically the entire game as well, 108-107. to And finally, the Indiana Pacers got the just... They got beat up by the Chicago Bulls, 125 to 99. Great to see from the Miami Heat perspective, due to the fact that all three of those teams are extremely close to the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference standings. If we look, the Orlando Magic are currently the fifth seed, and they are 42 and 30. The Indiana Pacers are currently the sixth seed at 41 and 33, and the Miami Heat are the seventh seed at 39 and 33. And the team of the Philadelphia 76ers, who also lost last night are a seed below the Miami Heat at 39-44. and 44. With that loss, it opens up a half-game separation from the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. And this does a lot for the Miami Heat, not just due to the fact that the Indiana Pacers and the Orlando Magic came closer in grasp. And obviously, it's not a game, so it's not like we win a game, they lose a game, and now we're tied in record or anything. But we did grow closer. And with the upcoming schedule, it seems like the Miami Heat have a legitimate chance at making a deep playoff push and getting out of the play-in tournament. So we have 10 games left. We've played 72 games so far this NBA season. I can't believe we're already this far through the NBA season. But again, this se this entire season will be wrapped up in about 16 to 17 days on April 14th. Now, if we look at the upcoming schedule for this Miami Heat team, we have two games against two teams that have already been eliminated from playoff contention. They both have been eliminated from playoff contention for some time now. The first one is tomorrow night, Friday, March 29th against the Portland Trailblazers. This game will be at home, and there is no excuse for the Miami Heat to lose this game. We need to dominate against teams that we should dominate against, and we cannot take nights, nights off, and we cannot look for any excuse to lose this game. Now, that is against Portland. That is the game at home before going on the road on Sunday, March 34, 31st, excuse me, at Washington. Now, we lost to Washington about a month ago. It was a, a game we should not have lost. It was abysmal to watch. We fell apart in the second half, and we kept the game close up until that point. It was competitive in a game that shouldn't have been. We should dominate teams like the Washington Wizards. We should dominate teams like the Pistons and the Trailblazers. In an upcoming schedule for Friday and Sunday's games, we need dominating performances from this Miami Heat team, regardless of who we have on the floor, because we need to really separate ourselves from these teams before hosting two massive games at home for the Miami Heat against Eastern Conference rivals, and not only the New York Knicks on Tuesday, but then on Thursday against the Philadelphia 76ers. Now again, the Philadelphia 76ers are only a half game behind us in the Eastern Conference standing, sitting in the 8th seed at 39-34 and 34, as we sit at 39-33. and 33. So, this, this game is probably going to be one of the bigger games of the NBA season unless we do drop the first, uh, unless we drop three games in a row to Portland, Washington, and New York. And then in that case, I will be in shambles and so will the entire Miami Heat team. So, but again, that's not going to happen as we're going to dominate those three teams and then host the Philadelphia 76ers. And we're going to win a massive game with massive playoff implications before going on the road for our final road stand of the NBA season. Three games out on the road the first one will be in houston against the rockets that is going to be a very great game as the rockets have been making a massive push for the playoff spots themselves out west as they've won 10 in a row and they've really found their strides as of late so that will be a competitive great game between two great teams 
before going to Indiana. Another massive game for the Miami Heat in playoff implications as they are only a, a one game ahead of us at 41-33, and 33, just one seed ahead of us in the last definitive play playoff spot and not in the play-in tournament for the Eastern Conference. Now, after the Indiana game in Indiana, we go to Atlanta, which again, Indiana, yes, or excuse me, Atlanta, another Eastern Conference rival, but they are in the 10th seed, six games below the Miami Heat. I do not think that that game is going to be much of a playoff implication due to the fact that Indiana is just trying to stay in the play-in spot and not they're not fighting to get out into the actual definitive playoff spots. Now, that is the third and final road game of the NBA season for this Miami Heat team, at least during the regular season. And then we come home for the final three games where we play a good Dallas Mavericks team who is competitive in a good Western Conference before playing two games at home to close out the NBA season, games 81 and 82 against the Toronto Raptors. Now, so the Toronto Raptors have not been great really all year. They're 23 and 50. They have some good young pieces, but again, they are already eliminated from, eliminated from playoff contention. So we're playing a team fighting for absolutely nothing. That is going to be another set of games where we absolutely have to dominate the opposition in order to really separate ourselves from these mediocre teams to really the good teams and get out of the play-in opportunity and get into the definitive playoff spots to in order to make our lives a little bit easier during the month of April and May and even possibly June if we make a deep playoff push in Miami. Now, there's other reasons why these games against Indiana, Philadelphia, and Orlando are so significant. Now, our season series with Orlando is already over, and if we look here, We've already played all four games, and we are leading the season series three to, or excuse me, three to one in a four-game season series against the Orlando Magic. So, if there's some magical way the Miami Heat can win the majority of these final games in this regular season, and we can somehow tie the Orlando Magic, who are currently in the fifth seed, three full games ahead of us, and again, crazier things have happened. The Orlando Magic have lost two in a row. They've won six out of their last ten. And the Miami Heat have a very favorable schedule coming up over their last 10 games of this regular season. If the Orlando Magic can lose some of these games, the Miami Heat can really put together some of these wins. Not only can we catch the Indiana Pacers, and we can catch the Orlando Magic. And if we were just somehow fortunate enough to tie in the regular season records, we would then own the tiebreaker. And we would overall have the higher record due to not only having the tie record, but owning the tiebreaker in the season series. Now, it doesn't stop there as... If we weren't able to catch the Orlando Magic and we were just able to catch the Indiana Pacers, this last game against Indiana on Sunday, April 7th in Indiana is probably going to be one of the bigger games of the entire NBA season for the Miami Heat due to the fact that we are currently tied 1-1, fighting for another or to get out of the play-in spot to get in a definitive playoff spot. We cannot lose to the Indiana Pacers in this third game on the 7th of April due to the fact that Again, it's tied 1-1. Winner takes all for the tiebreaker in this third and final game of this NBA season series. And again, if it comes down to a tied record and we're both tied for the sixth seed at 40 whatever the wins or losses is at that point in time, we have to have that season series won between the Indiana Pacers and we will just default as the higher seed due to owning the tiebreaker and then the final season series that we're going to highlight now is the philadelphia 76ers and it's another season series that we have the final game coming up in just a little bit six days or seven days away on uh, april 4th we play the final game against the 76ers of this regular season it's the fourth game we lead the season series two to one so we just cannot drop this game and tie the season series because then at that point we will be just shooting ourselves in the foot once again in such a tight spot due to the fact that, again, we only have 10 games left. By the time we play this Philadelphia 76ers team, we will only have six games remaining, and we do not want to leave it the chance as we need to win as many games as possible, especially the games against these Eastern Conference rivals, especially against Philadelphia, especially against Indiana, as these are the last games of the season series between these two teams. And it could possibly allow us to not only get a sixth seed, but maybe even a fifth seed if we're able to not tie but surpass the Orlando Magic, who seem like they may be struggling down the stretch of this regular season. And it could possibly result in a long playoff run for the Miami Heat. And here are the major opportunities from Brian Windhorst, a key uh, NBA insider who does cover the NBA greatly. And he had this to say on an exe on a 
ESPN Plus exclusive article saying what's on the line for the Miami Heat. He really did one for each or for 24 different players in the playoffs that are projected to be in the playoffs, I should say. One for each team. This one for the Miami Heat is based off Jimmy Butler. It says, what's on the line? Playoff Jimmy is a real thing. Regardless of the of his denials, those incredible springs have gotten the Heat to forget the sometimes frustrating winters with Butler's injury issues and occasional spats with coaches and teammates. Butler, 34, is eligible for an extension this summer with two years. The second is a player option and $100 million left on his deal. It's not clear whether the Heat will be ready to commit again, but Butler especially, if he leads yet another Heat playoff run, has another chance to make himself indispensable. Now, it, am I in any really way to say this? No, but he's already indispensable. He's Jimmy Butler. When this playoff time really starts, when April and May start, this guy is simply untouchable he's unguardable it seems like he's the leader the forefront just runaway leader for this Miami Heat team it's not 1A 1B anymore like it is through the regular season with players like Bam Adebayo Tyler Hero when he's healthy and others it is Jimmy Butler in his show he's at the forefront he's leading the way for a Miami Heat team that desperately really needs it and it's been showcased over this regular season so not only is he playing to win, like he said years ago when he came to Miami. I came to Miami to win. I didn't come here because it's sunny South Florida and Miami's awesome. It's South Beach. You know why everyone wants to No, I'm here to win. I'm here to win at a high rate. I'm here to be successful, not only as an individual player, because he doesn't care about the season awards. He said that just months ago, just two months ago, this regular season when he was conflicted with the idea by reporters and insiders about the idea of not being eligible for NBA all team or uh, offensive all teams or defensive first teams due to the fact that he's missed so many games he can't win individual awards anymore and he said he doesn't care he wants to be healthy he wants to be there for a playoff push and now we're getting time for that playoff push and it seems like playoff Jimmy might be making an appearance in these last 10 games to really help the Miami Heat get out of the seventh seed and make a push for possibly even the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. I can't wait to see how it plays out. I can't wait to see how Jimmy Butler shows up in it just shows up immensely for this Miami Heat team, especially not only down the stretch of these last 10 games, but for this massive playoff push that is at our hands and at our disposable disposable disposal with the Heat talent that we currently have with Jimmy Butler leading the way. Not only for his individual awards, but possibly for some more money and even any contract extension. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Can we catch Orlando? Do you think it's possible? Do you guys think that Jimmy Butler should or will get a contract extension this summer, regardless of how he plays down the stretch of this last 10 games in the playoffs? That'll be it for this episode of Heat Digest. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Help us hit that milestone of 1,200 subscribers. Thank you guys again. I'll see you on the next episode of Heat Digest.